What are we doing? What we're going to first discuss is one dimensional motion. Now, when I'm talking about one dimensional motion, all I mean is something moving in a single axis or along a straight line, not something moving around in circles. Now, this could be something as simple as a truck driving down the road, an ATV driving in a straight line down a trail, a race car, a space shuttle taking off upward in a straight line, or a train. Now, yes, a train can go around a corner, but what we're only worried about in one-dimensional motion is the train moving in a straight line. We're going to say this motion happens in a single axis. This can be in the horizontal axis, like with the car or the truck and the train, or this could be in the vertical axis, like with a space shuttle or a rocket. So in order to understand one-dimensional motion, we first need to get some vocabulary out of the way. So the first thing we're going to discuss is the difference between distance and displacement. First, let's look at distance. You've seen this before. When you drive your car down the road, the odometer increases. Every time you drive that car, the odometer increases a little bit more. If you drive to school, the odometer increases. On your way home, it increases again. If you put the car in reverse and drive, it's going to increase. The distance is always an increasing value. It's simply how far you've driven your car. Displacement. Well, that's a little different here. Displacement, we define as a change in position. Change is defined as a final value minus an initial value. Change. We show change with a little triangle. This triangle means change. So change we define as final minus initial. So when we're talking about displacement, our displacement is going to be the change in position. Let's talk about things in the x-axis. So we have a change in position. So what that means is we're going to be worried about the final position minus the initial position. So let's take a look at how to use this equation. All right, let's look at the situation of a truck driving forward 50 meters. Well, don't push it, it's too fast. No, ma'am. I want him to just, can you just let go? All right, now let's use this situation to try to figure out how distance and displacement are different. In this case, if the truck drives forward 50 meters, the odometer would increase by, by 50 meters. If you had a really weird car that added an odometer in meters, of course. Now, if we want to look at displacement, we need to know the initial and final positions of this, this truck. So let's go through and let's say this is a position of zero. And let's treat this road as though it's a great big number line in math class. That would make the final position 50. So when we look at displacement, which is change in position, our final position is going to be 50 minus our initial at zero which gives us a displacement of 50 meters. Well, using this example, you can't at all tell the difference between distance and displacement. In this case, distance and displacement came out to be the same thing. So let's look at a different example. Let's take a look at an ATV driving 30 meters in one direction, turning around and driving 30 meters back to where it began. So here's our person on their ATV. 
they're going to go. Thirty meters this way, and they're going to turn around and drive thirty meters back. Distance is easy enough to find here. All distance is is going to be the sum of these two distances traveled. We've got thirty meters plus another thirty meters. Displacement, well, that's a little bit different. In order to talk about initial and final position, what we need to do in this problem is assign positions. We need to know at what position is this ATV starting. If we treat this thing like a great big number line, like you would in math class, let's go ahead and just say this beginning position is zero. So this ATV is going to start at a position of zero, go over here, come back, and end at a position of zero. What that means is our final position is zero. And our initial position is zero. So final minus initial, our change in position is zero meters. So you can see pretty quickly here, the distance and displacement are not the same. Now, if I say the displacement is zero, does that mean the ATV didn't go anywhere? Absolutely not. The ATV most definitely went this way, turned around, and came back. When we talk about displacement, all we care about is the change from beginning to end. For our last example, we're going to look at a bucket loader. We're going to take this bucket loader and we're going to start with this at a position of 20. We're going to have this bucket loader go pick up some rubble at a position of 40. <laughs> and then it's going to take that rubble and bring it all the way back to a position of zero. <laughs> what we're trying to do is we're trying to go through and solve for the total distance traveled as well as displacement in this problem. Distance, much like the other problems, is, is going to be relatively simple here. Our bucket loader is going to go 20 meters this way. That is from 20 to 40. So it's a distance of 20 meters traveled this way, followed by 60 meters to come all the way back. So our distance is going to be the 20 it traveled to the right, plus the 40 back to the left. That's gonna give us a total distance of 60 meters traveled. Displacement on the other hand. By now we know displacement is a change in position, so we're not concerned with where the bucket loader goes in the middle of its trip. We're concerned with where it starts and where it finishes. Using our equation for displacement, we can show the displacement is zero minus the initial, that is 20. So the displacement comes out to be a rather odd negative 20 meters. You can see clearly the distance traveled of 60 and the displacement of negative 20 are two very different numbers. The distance isn't a huge surprise here, but this displacement being negative is a bit of a surprise. We haven't seen a negative displacement yet. Let's talk about what this negative means. If we're always saying anything to the right is positive, a positive displacement would mean effectively an increase in position. This negative displacement means a decrease in position. Ultimately, the change in position from start to finish was to the left. That's all this negative means. So from the very beginning to the very end, the bucket loader had a displacement of negative 20 meters. That's all for now.